better world is to come and tell you why, why, why. There's a better world is to come and tell you why. We will beat them on the land, on the sea, and in the sky. There's a better world is to come and tell you why. There's a better world is to come and don't you see, see, see. There's a better world is to come and don't you see. When we'll all be union and we'll all be free, there's a better world that's a-coming, don't you see? There's a better world a-coming, and don't you know, no, no, there's a better world that's a-coming, don't you know? I'm a union man in a union war, it's a union world I'm fighting for, there's a better world that's a-coming, don't you know? There's a better world that's a-coming, there's a better world to come and there's a better world to come and I'll tell you why, 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 don't you see, 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 and don't you know, no, no, hey, 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 there's a better world to come and I'll tell you why, 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 there's a better world to come and I'll tell you why. I was born in Minneapolis, Minnesota, in September 1911. My mother, maiden name, was Catherine McGillan, and she immigrated with her parents when she was three years old. And they landed in Stillwater, Minnesota, some 50, 60 miles east of Minneapolis. I never saw or met my father. He abandoned my mother and my sister uh, about six months before I was born. Subsequently, my mother remarried to a Norwegian. His name was Ole Severson. And he was, at that time, my early life, a Debsian. He was a follower of Eugene Debs in the Socialist Party, very, very strong. And he had been a practicing wobbly for many, many years before he uh, settled down in Minneapolis. You know, the IWW was an organization that really held out hope um, to workers who were considered to be unskilled, to women, to, uh, to immigrants. Uh, it offered them a vision of a really different society, and it held out the hope that that society could be achieved through the organization of one big union. He was a wobbly, and he believed in it, and he told me early stories about it, and he was very familiar with uh, many of the people uh, that uh, were in the leadership at that time, uh, in the forming of it, Daniel De Leon and Big Bill Haywood, and uh, Thompson and a few more. And the Wobs would hold um, street meetings. And um, I don't know if it was by chance or if they were just being, uh, well, <laughs> controversial, but they used to seem to set up their meetings against the, across the street from where the uh, Salvation Army was beating the drums. And I guess they would try to outshout them because it was quite ironical. Oh yes, I went to several meetings. Uh, the old man would take me down. Uh, my mother told me that he also took me to a meeting where Eugene Deb spoke when the uh, great uh, railroad strikes were going on in about 1921 when American industry and American government was out to suppress the Union and the radical movement, and particularly the socialist movement. When um, government officials and police looked at the labor movement, all they saw was red. And they rounded them up. Uh, it was very easy, in fact, to be 
in the dragnet of the Bureau of Internal Investigation at this moment in history. All you really needed was a few uh, subscriptions to militant uh, you know, labor periodicals, and that was enough to have uh, an agent you know, show up at your door. From the time that I can remember, my mother, who had a pretty good voice, would be singing Irish songs, and they were mostly resistance songs because the, her family were Catholic Irish, and they were in Northern Ireland, in Tyrone County, and the oppression by the British to Catholic Irish was very severe, according to the story she told me, and she carried on, I believe, what was the legacy of the Irish storytelling. And uh, I have to admit, my mother was a bit prejudiced against the British, but she was careful to make sure it was the British ruling class and not the British workers, because they were subjected to similar forms of tyranny as the Irish were under British rule in Ireland. Now all of this is before the rising and before there was the south of Ireland became independent of the uh, crown. So I learned early about oppression. Now my stepdad he was raised on a farm and was basically a teamster and a, he worked in the woods in the winter time before he settled down in Minneapolis. He worked on construction jobs, mostly railroad. There was very little highway work at that time. And he worked in the wheat fields during the harvest times and he was, in addition to everything else, he was a, operated steam engines, which were the motive power for running the threshing machines or the separators. In 1917, he belonged to the union, which was called Local 23 of the International Brotherhood of Teamsters. Uh, they conducted a strike in 1917 and after two or three weeks, the strike was broken. Now, among many of the people that were never re-employed was my stepdad. Now, we can't say that there was a blacklist that was exposed and open to the public, but we know damn well there was one because he was never able to work again after 1917 for any of the major Minneapolis teaming employers. So my early life was studded with those kind of events and they were topics of discussion at home. 